All right, so we are back, and guys, I got some bad news. I'm talking about Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, the fight that keeps on failing to happen. <laughs> I got multiple sources coming to me telling me this fight, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, is done. It's off, it's canceled, it's over. And it f***ing sucks. But just like any bad news, there's a silver lining. Jake has a new opponent, and he is far more dangerous than Tommy Fury. So why is Jake pulling the plug on this Tommy fight and who is this mystery opponent? You know what we do here. Stay tuned, the breakdown, let's go. All right, so first things first, let's talk about why Tommy and Jake is just off. It's not gonna happen. Well, we've kind of already covered this. Most accurate answer I can give you is that Tommy and his team are still working through a visa process. We all know now the Fury name and the connection with Daniel Kinahan, who is, again, a wanted man internationally for running basically a mob and anyone with even a loose connection to his name seems like they're having real troubles traveling right now it's the reason Tyson got stopped twice in the last three weeks and Tommy just seems to be guilty by association here and that's not Tommy's fault him being stopped the whole situation kind of being out of his hands I don't blame him for those things and no one really should it's the problem I have is with Tommy and Team Fury in general where is the transparency from Tommy's end he has one video saying Hey, listen, you know, we're going to try to get this worked out, but nothing on the follow up after like, hey, we can't get it worked out. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get an appointment. Jake, you want to move the card back? Let's run it again. It's just pure silence. And then you have the Fury family kind of smugly laughing on Instagram. <laughs> Frank Warren not even wanting to address the situation. It just didn't seem like there was any urgency on the side of Team Fury. And I'm not even saying they could have gotten this done quicker. It just felt like they were okay with letting this process go by as slowly as possible without even the attempt of getting an appointment at the embassy. The attempt to try to use their connections with Queensberry or even Tyson personally to cut the queue and try to get in there quicker. I'm not saying there could have been something done better. It just feels that way. And it's going to haunt Tommy forever. No matter how much this wasn't his fault, Tommy Fury won't just be Tyson Fury's little brother anymore. He'll be the guy that backed out on fighting the YouTuber twice. But let's talk about nicer things. Let's talk about more exciting things, different things, challenging things. Let's talk about Jake Paul's new opponent. So I had a source yesterday tell me that Jake and his team were excited about this new opponent, that it was someone that was going to bring respect to Jake's name. It was going to be a boxer, one that would gain Jake respect and shut everyone up saying he was afraid to fight a boxer. Your mind immediately goes to Anderson Silva, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. But looking through the comments of one BJ Flores, AKA head coach for Jake Paul, he dismissed the Anderson Silva fight and Jake dismissed the Julio Cesar Chavez fight. So I was clueless. I didn't have any idea who this would be but then on twitter it was leaked in a now deleted tweet one sharif rockman that tweet said something along the lines of jake paul is about to catch his first l with the little demon emoji you know the one you send your girl after a message to let her know this ain't a normal message i ain't playing around i'm feeling a little different right now so that part was a little odd but the message still remained the same from there it wasn't too hard because sharif made it pretty damn easy he started giving out information like a tour guide at disneyland he was telling you which direction who was involved and what was going on jake is going to be fighting Hasim Rockman Jr., the older brother of Sharif, and Jr.'s nickname is Gold Blooded for a reason. Hasim Rockman Sr. is a former multi time heavyweight champion. He beat Lennox Lewis, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time in 2001. He fought the likes of Evander Holyfield, Alexander Povetkin, Vladimir Klitschko on that list as well. He was amongst greats in his era. And as far as Jr. goes, he's 31, a little older, 12 and 1 pro record, and he has wins over multiple guys with winning records. We're not talking about the Tommy Fury stat pad. He has fought for regional titles. He's coming off a TKO loss, his first loss as a pro in his last fight. This is a massive step up in competition for Jake, but not just that. Another reason this name might sound familiar is because they have sparred before. Jake sparred Haseem Rockman Jr. in the lead up to the Nate Robinson fight. Well, I sparred Jake twice. And uh, the first time was like almost night and day from the, uh, the second time. Jake has put his mind to this boxing thing and he can go as far as he wants with it. Pat, would you be willing to get in the ring with him? Absolutely. I would put my money on the fight ending in the first round. I ain't gonna disrespect him and say first minute, but I would just I would just put it on 
Don't, don't, yeah. And like you heard right there, Haseem was complimentary of Jake for the level he was on at that point. And I don't think at that time Jake was on his level at all. I think Haseem probably did what he wanted to in a lot of those spars and probably didn't show a ton to Jake because he didn't have to. Jake just wasn't there yet. And because of the experience, not only as an amateur, but as a pro that Haseem has and the years of boxing, the same things we said about Tommy Fury, but now just elevated a different level, this is a dangerous fucking fight for Jake. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Haseem Rockman Jr. just fought at heavyweight, 224 pounds. And I know he's fought at cruiserweight before, but we're talking about taking a fight on a month's notice now. And there's going to be a drastic cut. Him getting back down to 200 or maybe even in the 190s where Jake likes to be. This is a massive risk for Jake. Again, more so in my opinion than the Tommy Fury fight because at least... When people think Fury, they think Tyson, and he is the best heavyweight on the planet. On a casual fans level, not a hardcore boxing fan, not someone that understands how good his father was and how good he and his brother are currently. They're going to look at this fight and say, who is that guy and why is Jake fighting him? Jake's putting a lot on the line because you win this fight, and yes, you'll get the respect of boxing heads all over. And he should get that respect for even taking this fight. Again, his second choice, two times in two fights. Guys that he hasn't prepared for, hasn't been in camp for because Tommy Fury couldn't hold his end of the bargain. Jake's power is obviously his big calling card, but now with the opponent shifting at least 20 pounds in weight higher, there is going to be a drop off to how many of those big power shots connect and do so cleanly, but he still has a massive right hand. It's always going to be dangerous. I don't care if you're 180 pounds or 220. Jake can knock you out with that shot. And I'm not trying to play boxing math here, but it does look like it's going to be an even more difficult matchup skill-wise for Jake. And again, the short notice might play a factor in that. But we're talking about a legitimate pro boxer here, not a guy that didn't have an amateur career. This guy's for real. And I know that because one of our favorites here on the channel, Vidal Riley, was even talking about potentially fighting him as an opponent currently right now. Hasim Ratman Jr., who's someone I would fight in a natural fight. But all even having him in mind as a potential good matchup for him should tell you how serious this is that Jake is taking this fight. Doesn't serve some kind of advantage that Jake would have over Tommy or any other inexperienced guy. If you people are still doubting that Jake wants to get better in this scene, I don't know what to tell you. And I don't necessarily understand the pick, but I can't say anything but respect because if he finds a way to win this one, you can't say shit to him. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think down below. Is Haseem Rockman Jr. a good pick for Jake? Is the risk worth the reward because of his dad's name and his ability as a legitimate pro fighter? Or are his skills and the danger involved with this that if Jake loses could absolutely diminish his star power? Is that worth it? And is this the last time we see Jake Paul and Tommy Fury matched up on a card? I hope so. Tommy's pullout game is crazy strong and he didn't get it from boxing so it must be from Molly May saying, listen, I'm the cash cow in the family. I'm making the money here so you're just gonna have to hold on, guy. But anyway, there it is. Jake's opponent, apparently not confirmed, Haseem Rockman Jr. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you think there. The question still remains, what happens on August 6th? Nothing's confirmed, so Oh, maybe in the next five minutes while I'm editing this video tomorrow morning sometime soon I guess we'll find out